All right, guys, so I finally did it. It's better to be late than never doing it, but um, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon that's uh, been going around YouTube with uh, Copart Rebuilds, and I just want to mention that I'm not sponsored by Copart. Um, the reason it took me so long to do uh, this kind of rebuild was because I'm not sponsored on my channel, so everything that I do is paid for out of my own pocket. And being a full-time student, being a full-time uh, employee, and having a family, um, extra money doesn't come too easy. So um, I was fortunate to be able to win this lot, and um, we'll take a look at it here. But a, a little about the lot first is that, uh, um, you know, I, I kind of threw a lowball bid at it, and um, nobody outbid me. So let's take a look at it here. So this is the newest rebuild that I'm going to be featuring on the channel. So um, this vehicle actually should be here today. It's a 2007 Subaru Outback XT. Um, and for some reason, Copart has it listed as a Subaru Legacy Outback, which is uh, definitely not it. So it could be a reason why my lowball bid um, actually stuck. But as you can see, my max bid was $800 on this car. Um, and I actually want it for seven fifty. And so, positives about this car: it's a two thousand seven. It only has one hundred and forty six thousand miles on it. Um, now, at first, I wasn't too sure about this car because um, I've seen cars like this with some extensive frame damage, um, missing the front end um, on the car. But um, if we look a little closer on the vehicle photos here. Um, this car was actually hit high center um, right here um, and you and the damage actually reflects it right here you can see on the uh, center of the core support where the hood latch is uh, this whole part is dented right in on there so uh, it was definitely hit high center above the frame rails right there um, so and it, and it subsequently pulled the uh, bottom of the core support up into the condenser and the radiator and everything else like that. Uh, the second thing is the interior um, is there's no uh, deployed airbags in the interior. So this also tells me that the collision was either relatively low speed or didn't contact um, the it, it, it wasn't enough to contact the frame rails um, to deploy where the airbag sensors are. Um, so that was the second thing because these airbags here um, are are very expensive. The side passenger airbags are very expensive, um, and so are the uh, driver's airbags. And then, of course, you got to replace. You know, they recommend you replace the clock spring and the airbag computer, or you have to send in your airbag computer to be um, to basically be uh, reset uh, things like that, um, and then. The third thing that drew me to this car was the fact that it is a manual transmission um, with SI drive, which is a very rare option on this car. Uh, Subaru didn't make very many Outback XTs, um, and they started in 2005, and as they went along to um, the uh, uh, newer generation, um, the Generation 5, um, they made less and less each year. So in 2007, uh, there wasn't very many XTs made, and uh, by estimates, only about 560 were actually made in 2007 with a manual transmission. So uh, this is a specially rare car here um, to find with uh, a manual transmission in it. Um, other than that, the interior um, just looks impeccable on it. Um, I don't see any evidence of rips on the on the seats uh, over here on the driver's bolster is normally where you see the most wear. Um, can't really tell on the driver's side bolster on the seat bottom, but uh, uh, we'll uh, definitely take a look at it when the transport shows up. Uh, back seat is uh, just as good as the front, uh, if not better. Um, so there's uh, you know almost no wear on these back seats and it's it's black leather interior which I couldn't ask for for better um, moving along to the engine bay here this is another telltale sign here 
that uh, uh, this card didn't have any uh, too bad of damage to it because if we take a look at the the bottom where the, uh, the front plastics are on the um, on the motor, none of them are, none of them are broken. The only thing that is broken is the um, the air pump, and that's just the plastic cover that goes over the front of that. Um, but to the timing covers, nothing else is uh, uh, damaged on this. So that was definitely a huge, huge win on that one. Um, and then even then, uh, looking at where the battery sits, uh, generally this is where you see the damage on the on the cars there. So um, definitely um, huge uh, benefit right there. Uh, we take a look at the uh, the front profile of the vehicle here. Again, you can see the normal damage of the um, the hood. Um, the hood's bent back. Um, whatever they hit, they must have hit um, just right here, uh, right where the hood grill area is, because that's all pushed back. Everything else, even over here where the fenders are, um, you look at the side profile where the fenders are, the fenders aren't even touched. So whatever they hit was definitely in this area here. Um, so the other thing is that um, when I took a look at the uh, back profile here, um, the they like to uh, they like to uh, write on the back windows here, and and one thing I found was VIR complete. Now this stands for uh, vehicle inspection report, and this was actually disassembled completely by a body shop um, to determine what exactly needed to be done um, to fix this car. And um, again, on the front windows, VIR complete is written on the front window as well. Um, and there's no other telltale signs that this car has um, any kind of other defects to it as well. Uh, the tires are in relatively good shape. Um, everything back from the, even like I said, even the fender here, the fender's in, in almost perfect shape. Um, so taking a look at the different profiles of the vehicle, um, there's not much to report on on. on other damage. I mean, not even any door dings that I can see offhand on these photos. Um, looks like a little scuff there, but that could be a, a shadow reflection there. Um, the back bumper looks in really, really good shape. Um, the the, the tail lights are in, in all good shape, which is a win here. Um, so I'm fairly confident that this vehicle is not going to have um, any frame damage to it. Um, even the uh, the front profile where the washer bottle is, these things will always, uh, in a front impact, uh, these things take the brunt of the force. Um, I bought a, a rebuilt one that uh, was hit on the pa the driver's side right here where the headlight is, and it just completely decimated this uh, washer bottle here. So that's a huge win there, and that's a huge sign for me that uh, the damage was localized to the front grill area here. Um, on the hood. So with any luck, I mean, it doesn't look like there's any parts inside the vehicle. Um, so I'm not optimistic that we're going to find the AC condenser or fans or anything else. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing is that, again, the, uh, the front of the motor looks really good. Yeah, the uh, belt looks like it's um, off of the pulley there. Um, so, I mean, other than that, the, the vehicle looks pretty good, um, and I'm excited to, uh, to receive it here. So we'll see what happens when the transport shows up, and uh, hopefully we can get this build going.